Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Mara Minecraft. This is episode 2 of Seopolis. If you are enjoying this series, please make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified of when new episodes go live. But without further ado, let's begin with today's episode. In between episodes, I have only made a few more furnaces that are here, even behind the chest, so we can smelt multiple items at the same time, which is kind of nice. I have made a bit more charcoal, a bit more vines, a bit more string. I chopped down a stack of each of the logs, which I don't think I've done all in the last episode. I might have, but we have this completed now in this capstone challenges. All we need to do is do the hostile mobs, so I think we're gonna get into a mob farm today. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, maybe we can even... We probably can't progress to a mob fan because we'd need redstone, which requires overworld matter, which requires a smeltery, so it's a whole lot of chain that we're not gonna get to, I don't think. Um, but what we can do is, uh, if I jump up here, I have saved a little bit of red sand and a bit of sand, and we also have a bunch more in the drawers, I believe, because I've just been AFKing in here. We have, yeah, another 200-ish each of of those. And in here, we can even toss all of those in here just to see how much we have. Uh, we have around 400 cobblestone, which is wonderful. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to sift through all of this, which I believe is going to get us copper and nickel and cinnabar. And then also uh, is going to get us, if we sift the sand, it's going to get more nickel and more tin and also niter dust. So I'm going to go do that. Uh, we'll see if I'll grab more uh, from the drawers downstairs, but we're going to go through all of this. I have sifted around 8 stacks of each of the sand types, and we now have 37 copper, 38 tin, and 53 nickel chunks. And we also have a bunch of niter, a bit of cinnabar, and a few chunks left over, which are going to go into the chest right over here, which is our sifting chest, so they can stay in there. I also want to mention that I have 4 iron. Uh, we got that from just... Uh, breaking down the saddles here in the cutting board over the time that I was AFKing here, basically. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a bucket. I think that's gonna be big for transferring over lava, because now we can do this and this without destroying the bucket. Uh, and it's really cool. And we can just use this ceramic bucket for uh, getting water. And I could probably just grab a bucket of water just to have on me for whatever reason need be. And this bucket can go in here. I've also added some blocks above here, above the lava, because if we uh, if we break open the sphere, water flows down, and I don't want it to flow over the lava, and I don't know if it's going to turn into obsidian, or if that's been somehow disabled, but uh, if that happens, we just have a block we can't remove then, so uh, I don't really want to be having that in the base. So with this copper and tin chunks, we can start getting into a better smeltery, but did I put the flint in here? Did it stay in here? It did. Okay. What we need is we need to upgrade our tools is basically what the quest uh, is telling us. So in here, it's a flint pickaxe head, which is going to get us this. Um, and then we need to make grout, which is a bunch of gravel, a bunch of sand, and a bit of clay. So what I'm going to do first is upgrade the tools in here. So we're going to do that. And whoops. That. Cool. We now have flint pickaxe and a flint axe head, which has more durability and a possibly more speed as well. So as far as the sand and the gravel is concerned, we need to grab a bunch of this. We have a stack here, and let's grab possibly another stack of that. All right, and we have 400 cobble, and I did smelt a bit of cobble uh, in, the, in between episodes here. I didn't prepare as much, but we can grab, I don't know, like four stacks of these. And we can get it cooking as well, because we're going to need more of it. So let's do that, 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 and that. And then somewhere I have a bit of stone. And we also have just a stack of stone here. Uh, so let's get this cooking as well. Might as well, because we need gravel. So basically, I have to do a bit of waiting uh, and a bit of breaking down of the stone to get a bit of, bit of gravel. I don't know why this... Do I like... Ah, scroll wheel. Okay. No restrictions, please. Thank you. Okay, that's what happens. Gotcha. So we're going to do that. Get a bunch of gravel going. And also, I have a little bit of clay. Crap. Okay. <laughs> I have a bit of clay here as well, what I wanted to say. So we're going to get that and a bit of sand and a bunch of gravel here to turn into a bunch of grout. And we can then turn that into 
stuff for the smeltery once we get more stone and more gravel as well. And what we have to do is we have to blast furnace this into the seared bricks. So that's just going to do its thing over there. And while we wait, more stone is going to be made and more uh, gravel can then be made with then being turned into more grout. And eventually, once we have a smeltery, we're going to use the grout in the smeltery because it doubles the seared stone. So you get two ingots instead of just getting the one. While we're waiting for the smelting to happen, we can craft ourselves a wooden crucible, which is, I believe, going to complete this uh, chapter over here so we can collect the reward. Oh, no, we need a stack of terracotta, which is molten clay in the smeltery. Okay, gotcha. But we're almost complete, and that is going to get us a drawer controller and drawer keys, which is the thing that I'm most excited about, because it's very difficult to see how much cobblestone you have in the drawer with having to shift right click it to uh, actually open up the GUI, but I'm still waiting for more cedar bricks. But while we have here, we can start crafting the things that we need. We need a seared heater since we have a few bricks here. So let's get that going uh, and collect quests. And then we need to make a seared melter, which is a seared gauge, which is a bit of glass, which I have smelted over here. So that, 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 and four of these seared gauge. And that is going to get us a seared melter. Awesome. And then we need a seared tank, faucet, and tables and basins. So a basin, or sorry, a table, a faucet, and a seared tank. Uh, what is a seared tank recipe? Oh, it's just the glass in the middle. We do have more seared brick coming in. So boom, and a glass. Cool. Awesome. So that is pretty much all we need for the smeltery, except for a little basin right over here. Boom, like that. Awesome. That is complete. And then we can get into botany pots. Uh, okay, so those are all the valid items. Okay, so we need to assemble the smeltery now, which is going to require a few more of these uh, bricks. So I really don't have uh, much space for this. So uh, where do we want it? I think we're using this the least because we just have dirt inside. So we're going to break open over here, I think. And we're going to put this guy down. We're going to put the seared melter. Place above a seared tank or heater to fuel. Oh, so we need a too tall smeltery. Okay, so that, that. And then we need a seared solid fuel source for the melter. Ah, gotcha. So we don't have to use lava right off the bat. So we can use uh, some coal or something uh, as well. Uh, we don't have a seared drain. Is it not? It doesn't actually. Ah, okay. So we can pour directly out of the thing. Okay, gotcha. So we don't. Uh, so what we can do is we can just do this. Not have that in the floor for the time being. And we can pour directly out of this. So this should be the thing that is working. And let's grab, um, I don't know. One charcoal, go. Okay, I assume we put something in. Ah, there we go, and then it triggers, cool. We'll grab a charcoal block, I guess. Does this have a, it has a time limit. Okay, so let's do this and this, and we're gonna just burn the tiny coals, or char charcoals, I should say. So that made two, oh, it made uh, this, we need two of these, apparently. Oh, does it melt less? Oh, it doesn't double. Ah, so three turn into like four or something because it's three nuggets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Right. Um. Yeah, and then we need sand casts, I believe. I don't know how they're exactly made, but I presume with sand. Uh, and we have a bunch of sand here. So let's toss that in there and then there just so it's inside. Okay. Sand cast. And we can then pour out an ingot. We do that. Take the ingot out. And we can pour out one copper ingot. And I believe the sand cast is going to go away. Yeah. And then we have an ingot. Uh, and we can use the ingot to get another cast. And then boom. And we can pour out the four ingots of this. Uh, I think I need a seared drain, which is probably something like this. Oh, no. It needs something else, right? It requires two copper ingots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so we have the faucet. So we have to get the botany pots to finish up this Tinkers 2. And then it goes probably here with the flint sieving. And then Tinkers 3 is where we make a smeltery controller. Ah, gotcha. It's four ingots of copper over its reader. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I melted a bit more copper, so I could melt a bunch more clay in here, but I already made the smeltery controller, which is the brain of the smeltery, and in the time being, we're just gonna melt some clay here, and we're gonna uh, turn that into clay blocks. I believe it puts like two blocks or something inside, uh, and we need a couple of those to get uh, a botany pot. We need two more terracotta, right, for one of the botany pots. But I think I want to get like two or maybe more because uh, we're going to get into some crops really quick and then we can just grow potatoes in the botany pots and stuff. So that should be fine. Um, and as soon as we get one of these, we should have three in here. Turn these into a flower pot and then boom. Uh, and I think we need like five for this. Yeah, yeah, we need five, not three. And there we go, we can make ourselves a botany pot. We also need to make a wooden hopper, and we can turn that and the botany pot into a hopper botany pot, I believe, which is what is the uh, last thing right over here. And then we get loud noises for chapter completion. Cool, so we need to get a stack of seared bricks as well and a stack of terracotta. Uh, and this only needs to be, oh yeah, we had a maximum stack of three, right? Uh, last time. So we're not going to do the clay in here, even though we can possibly automate it with putting like a hopper underneath and tossing in just a stack of clay, but we need to sift a bunch more um, gravel to get more dust to get more clay. So uh, we're just going to break this for the moment since we have the smeltery controller uh, and the seared heater, I don't think is, or the seared melter, I don't think it's going to be a thing that we need. So let's toss the grout in here just so we can pick up everything. And what we can possibly do is we can just set up like a little super tiny smeltery and see if we can automate that at least for the time being so we can get uh, the clay and the seared bricks flowing. So we're going to do this. We're going to put a smeltery controller down here. And I think we can just put this here. And then we need a couple of... Uh, we need one brick actually in the back. And then one of these is going to be a drain, which is boom, 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 and boom, boom. See your drain and we can put that here and then we can faucet on both sides and we're going to put here a casting basin and here we're going to put a casting table like that and that I think should be a smeltery with one uh, one item inside of it so boom boom and what we can do is toss in grout that I put in here and that is going to smelt very slowly with lava, and we have pretty much almost a full set of lava in here, even though we're still using a torch to melt, and I know I could be using lava to melt the lava, but uh, for the time being, it's fine, and I don't want to burn my base down, so it's all good. Uh, and what we can possibly do is we can grab this and make a few more hoppers, right? That, 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 make me some hoppers, please. Thank you. All right, so we're going to put a hopper right here. A stack of grout inside so that's going to keep melting into seared stone and what we can then do is we can put a hopper right underneath here so it's going to pull that out uh right as it's made it's going to be a super ghetto setup but uh, i want to get um, 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 um a couple of more seared bricks so let's do this let's get a sand mold thing make another thing mold so we can get a few more just so i can get another block on top of here There we go. Okay, so we can get another block right up here and we can grab a lever if I grab a little bit of cobblestone and know how to jump properly. Cobblestone and a stick. I'm going to do a lever and do this and that should start melting out and making seared stone, I believe. And I don't know if I can chisel that into uh, something else. We can cut it. Oh, we can stone cut it directly into seared bricks if we wanted to. Okay, cool. Right. Nice. So that is going to be okay. We can change it up as we need to. But I'm going to actually just grab uh, these couple pieces. And if we put this one on top, we can start melting two grout at a time. 
So that is going to be a little bit faster, and we're going to slowly drain all of our lava, which is perfectly fine. If we wanted to, we could make another seared heater and put it on top. Um, and this is our seared melter that can go inside of a chest because it doesn't need to exist anymore. But that is going to be a thing, and it's going to pour all of the things, and we can eventually make a bigger smeltery. But right now, I think I want to get into the shop here. And I want to buy some of these gadgets because I want to start getting into building some other things because uh, our thing is way too small. Our base, I should say. So we need to build something that is going to be a bit bigger and a bit better. So I'm going to go grab some sea bucks here and also clean my inventory just a tiny bit. Let's put the clay in the corresponding spot and the charcoal away and all of these things away that we don't need right now. Uh, and all the ingots. Cool. We have just a bit more space so we can go into the shop and we can buy this for 25 C bucks. We get those three rewards and I'm also going to get the exchanging gadget because why not? Right. And paste container allows for construction of custom buildings using construction paste, not block. Ah, gotcha. Okay. So what is it to make the paste? Construction paste building gadgets. Okay, do you just get a full container and you can't make the construction paste? So you just buy... Interesting. So you can just buy the thing and I assume it's a full tank? I'm not sure. I'm not gonna buy it right now because I can just use the blocks, so it's fine. Craft me. Okay. Okay, and they don't come charged, so what we can do is we can toss, plop down a charging station right in between here. It's a perfect spot. So this requires fuel, and then it will charge uh, these guys up with power. And it burns tiny coals super quickly, so we're going to grab some charcoal blocks and we're going to burn those, I think. Uh, I think that's going to be a little bit uh, quicker. And we can charge the exchanging edge as well. I managed to make enough clay to pour out the stack of terracotta and I also made a stack of seared bricks by just turning the seared stone that we got from the casting basin directly into seared bricks. There is a direct recipe to turn anything of uh, seared block type into uh, a crafting window to get that. So we can claim our checkmark reward here and complete CC2 before even completing Capstone Challenges 1 because apparently hostile mobs are difficult. So we have a drawer controller now that we aren't going to utilize just yet, but I want to do this that I have set up here on the botany pot. We can produce oak logs, apples, oak leaves, and oak saplings out of this. So the oak logs are going to fill up fairly quickly here, but it should be fine. The big thing that we can do here is this on both of the drawers. Boom. So we can now actually see how much cobble and anything we are producing. Uh, and this number really isn't going to go up because we're not putting directly into the drawer due to the soul, co soul stone cobble, which is uh, a bit of a weird thing. Uh, we could potentially, you know what we can do? Uh, we can do this. I have, a, I have an idea. We can utilize the drawer controller. We're going to put this guy here and then we're going to grab just a regular drawer and we're going to grab our drawer controller. And since we're getting the most of cobblestone, right? We're gonna take this down. Uh, we're gonna put the rest of the stuff in here that we can collect. Put this down. Put the regular drawer right here. Even though that is kind of like... Um, <laughs> let's get some slabs, shall we? Boom. 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 Boom, 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 boom. Actually, no. <laughs> That's so weird. Uh, anyway, that's at least going to block. Uh, yeah, you know what I can do? I can put like pressure plates or trapdoors down. That could be a better thing than slabs. But what I wanted to do here is I wanted to take the cobblestone out because we are producing the most out of that. Of that. So we're going to toss that there and the soul stone cobble over there. And then we can quantify this, lock this, lock this. And I'm actually going to go make some trapdoors so we can fix down there uh, the mess that we have made. I totally figured out that I don't need that three-pull water source down there because we can just simply grab water out of this bucket or behind this bucket even as well. Or bucket? What? Barrel. That's what I'm trying to say. We have water in that barrel. So what we're actually going to do is just get rid of this because it's no longer needed. So I'll grab these three slabs. Boop, boop, boop. 
boop, 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 apparently. Uh, and we're gonna get those out of the way and even get rid of these pressure plates that I wanted to have here. And I even gone to the lengths of making river pressure plates from Upgrade Aquatic because they look a little bit prettier, but it is not needed and I can't jump anyway. So uh, that is really a waste of wood. But anyway, what I'm doing right now is I'm smelting down some copper here uh, and nine total copper is gonna make two blocks. So I'm pretty much just gonna do this and then turn each one of these off. You know what I might actually do? I put buttons on here because then if you put a button, I think it would work for uh, for one block each. And we're gonna do the same for nickel. We're gonna melt nine down because that turns into two blocks directly. So we can grab that out of here and get a bunch of copper going uh, for what we're gonna need in the future here. And in the quest here, we also can collect some of this. Uh, and I know I can click this, ah, this and claim all the rewards. So that is cool. Uh, and we need to turn copper and tin into some bronze. So that is going to be three of these and actually six of these and three of the tin, I think is going to be what we need. But I'm going to actually wait for this nickel to smelt so we can pour that out into a full block um, virtue of the casting basin. And I'm just going to process this to turn into some bronze. And I'm also going to process that to turn into some constantin, which is just going to take some time. And then we might get looking into a mob farm, I think, before we do any of this overworld matter going up here to the coral block and prismarine stage. It has been a couple days since the last clip that I recorded. And in the meantime, I've just been sitting here preparing for building our new base. And also our stuff down here has just been doing work. And I have been compressing the cobblestone because the drawer keeps getting filled. And also for the sand, I am compressing it down into compressed sand. So we have that uh, in here and in here as well. So that is good. Uh, I don't know if I showed, but I set up um, saplings for different things here. So we're getting acacia logs and spruce logs, and it really doesn't matter if we have all of these set up because we're basically gonna be mostly building out of river stuff, river logs, or I should say riv stripped river logs and river planks. And I also found this needle block it's called coral stone. It's basically stone. And uh, these guys, the nautilus shells, if we look at uses, it's this. Eight stone and a nautilus shell gets you 16 coral stone. So you, in turn, kind of like double your stone value. So that's really cool. And in here, we have a bunch of stone already. And I think I have more in here if we need more of it. But I think I have matheted everything out. So this should be everything that we need. And if we go outside real fast, and I'll just take a quick nap just so we don't get uh, assaulted by phantoms, probably, because I don't know when's the last time that I slept. But if we go out here real quick, and if I hold this in my hand, uh, does it show? It does show. You can see like little tippy tops of things over there. But if we jump down here, this will be our base and we're just going to go build it. Uh, I'm gonna see if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try and fill my inventory with uh, as many blocks as I possibly can off the frame. So basically uh, the planks, the logs, maybe the glass panes and all of that. And then we're gonna go have to remove all the water in there. So that's gonna be fun. Uh, I think I'm gonna make a few water breathing potions. I think there is a way where we can make it. Yeah, it's bowls of water, water bottle and some cod. I'll make some of those just so we have them on the go. Uh, and then we can see uh, about building this. I have filled my inventory with strip river logs and river planks, and we're just gonna go see about building this. Right click. Okay, it built everything that it could from all of the things. So now all I have to do is drop down, grab more things, and build the rest of the stuff. So I'm gonna grab all the planks and all of the things, and we're just gonna go build it. And then we're gonna go together and see about uh, emptying it out of water. All right, now let's see. I have a compressed sponge on a stick, and I also have just the regular sponge on a stick that I've used a little bit, but we're gonna drink a water breathing potion. We're gonna head on inside, and I'm gonna place this guy back, and now we basically have uh, just water everywhere. So, um, let's see. Can we manage to... Oh god, that just went through so quick. And it's all regenerating. Okay, um, right. So... What we possibly may have to do 
is either make a whole bunch of sponges or grab a bunch of sand and just building, build everything with sand inside and then we can just stain mine it. Uh, or we can kind of try using regular old plain sponges. But it's kind of like filling back in. Um, right. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I might get a bunch of sand and just use sand to get rid of all of this. Uh, we can use the building wand to just build it everywhere and then get rid of it. Yeah, I didn't really think this through. And then we also have the basement that we have to get rid of the water as well. So, um, yeah, I'll try and figure this out. We'll see. This process is going to be more painful than I realized. I have managed to clear out the basement. And the basement is only three tall. And that took quite a bit. I think like half an hour, if not more. And then in here, we have a five tall space, I believe. So, uh, plus we have uh, underwater mobs that spawn that are gonna hurt. Uh, please let me go, thank you. So, uh, I'm gonna have to figure out a proper system of how we can do this. Uh, but I don't really have a clue how exactly. Uh, I mean, just getting a bunch of sand and filling everything in, it was working fine. I kind of split this off into a couple sections. I did like a cobblestone line from that pillar to this pillar, and then I cleared all of this for, with sand, and then I cleared all the water, because the water was pouring out through the glass panes, because they uh, get waterlogged when you place the... when you place things with your copy-paste gadget. Uh, and basically, if you remove the water, it is perfectly fine. They uh, stay normal. So, right now, I think I need to go away. Or away. I need to go back to my uh, old base. And we need to uh, cook up some sponges. I still have a bunch here, but uh, we're gonna cook some up. And we're also gonna grab some more sand if we have uh, any leftover. So, we're gonna see about that. When I was doing the clearing of the water in the basement, I was filling every single block with sand and then just removing it. And I'm a total dum-dum. I can just simply make little, like, patches like this and then spam sponges from the top down. And I can easily remove all of the water, hopefully. If I would plan ahead and place these three blocks in here to block that water from going in. And then we can just spam another couple sponges and we've cleared the room. And then I can just use uh, my super hoe that just broke uh, to make another one. And one thing that I didn't show that I made in between episodes that was actually added is this handheld crafting table. And there are a few more quests here that showed up, like the bedroll, for example, from uh, Wooden Tech. We need to make one of these to... Um, to complete the tier again, and that's pretty much going to be happening throughout the updates. Uh, things are going to be added, mods are going to be updated, and so forth. So things will change, and quests will get uh, decompleted, or at least the entire thing, the chapters will get decompleted, I should say. So I think now I have to go cook up some more sponges, because uh, I am pretty much out of them here. So we'll go get some more of those, and then uh, we can clear out some more stuff. And I'll just pretty much do this off-camera, because it's not really interesting work. And I don't think I have Replay Mod installed here, plus I don't want to bring on a second account and go through all of that shenanigans to do a time-lapse. So we're just going to get it done, and it's going to be good. So see you back once we have breathable air, and we can start working on the proper base. That took significantly less time than I was expecting if I had to fill everything with sand, but I am dumb and I didn't know how sponges worked, or I forgot. Any hoozle, it is now all clear, and all we have to do now is fix up some stuff that I didn't put in the copy-paste gadget, because this vertical slab isn't really a best friend with the copy-paste gadget, and it pastes it like... Uh, let's say one of the sides it would be this way, and then the other side it would be this way, uh, this way, and then the other side it would be this way, and then it would be this way on the fourth side. So I would have to go through all of the vertical slabs, break them, replace them, so I decided to just leave them out of the schematic thing, and we are just gonna go place them manually. So I'm gonna go around all of the inside over here, and we're gonna place vertical slabs, so we make uh, this area look like this. And just to explain what the plan is for this space here, uh, in here, in this 3x3 three three gap, we're gonna have three machines, right, in the middle, like so, and then we can have drawers on the bottom, drawers on the top for the input and the output of the machine. And then on this side, we're just going to have a 3x3 of drawers, I think. 
uh, for personal storage or for just storage in general. And what we're going to do is we're going to place some of these slabs like this to make this a little bit uh, or have a little bit of depth. So the drawers are going to be uh, sunk in by half of a block, which is kind of nice. So we're going to do this. And then here on this side, if we break this, we're going to get some water coming in, which is totally fine. But we're going to put some vertical slabs right in a perfect spot. Game. Okay, let's just vein mine this and let's try and fix it up properly. There we go. Okay, it's going to flush away some torches, which is perfectly fine, but we can just replace those later. Uh, and that should be good. So the outside, I think I have to fix up a little bit as well. Once we uh, once we have to break this cobblestone, I believe I need another stair here. So I need to make one of those. Uh, there may or may not have been a few creeper explosions here and there, but let's just make a couple of stairs because we're going to need them. So in here, I believe we have vertical slabs like this and like this. And then I think I can safely break this cobble. Okay, so that's going to be just the water thing. And then I believe here in the middle, what I wanted to do is have planks going down like so. And let's just uh, fill in these slabs before we we do anything. So let's do that. And these. There we go. Let's break that cobble bits. Boom. Okay. And then in here, we're going to have some of these slabs like so, just so we cover up the water from the outside. Boom, boom. And we can still steal. We can still easily walk back and forth here uh, in between the cabling. And these holes are going to be where the cables are going to go down to the basement. Uh, so that's going to be pretty cool. And I need to repair my thing. Uh, I also made these in between episodes flint repair kits. It's basically like sharpening kits from before. Uh, they just repair your tools without having to n go to a, uh, a crafting station or tool station or whatever that is. Uh, but yeah, this is just going to be me for the next couple minutes fixing this up. And once we come back, we can actually start moving things over from the other base. But I think that might have to wait for the next episode. I have also now emptied out this entire old base and I think we're just going to destroy it because there's no need for this to be existing next to the other base. So we're just going to go and we're just going to basically vein mine everything except for the sea lanterns because I can transport them using cardboard boxes, uh, which is going to be the easiest solution for this. And I probably should drink like a water breeding potion or something. Uh, and all of the glass and everything is just going to get transported up via the water. So that should be perfectly fine. Uh, and yeah, I'll just get rid of this, uh, pick up the sea lanterns with cardboard boxes, and then we can meet in there and we can sort our mess out. Before we end off today's episode, I wanted to at least get our cobblestone generator and our sand generator working again. So these guys are working hard we're hardly working on getting us cobblestone. So in here, we're going to set up a drawer controller like this and like this. And then we can toss in a trim right here. And we can then put uh, a lot of the things in just single drawers. We don't have to have these two by two or three by three drawers. So uh, we're going to just split things up a little bit over here. So let me grab a few more of these. Your this guy, this guy, this guy and this guy. Right, so in the middle, we can toss in the cobbly bits. So that should get drained from this guy. Should be going in. Yeah, there we go. And then we need to put the sand into each, each corresponding drawer. So let me just uh, quickly get these all sorted out and we can just look at it later because I'm going to do a bit of tweaking anyway. And there we go. This is how it's going to look for the time being. We have the drawer controller right here in the middle, and then we have an oak trim right beneath this cobblestone drawer, and everything else is connected through just drawers. So these guys are getting pretty full, so we might add a couple more on either side to store the granite, uh, andesite, and granite. Uh, sorry, andesite, diorite, and granite in the compressed variant. Uh, I might just use it for lava once we get a smeltery cooking or we get a tank of some sorts going. We can just pump out the lava as well. That way these are going to get used very much so. So in the next episode, 
What I want to set up is a mob farm using dreadful dirt, which is this guy. It spawns more hostile mobs and it will ignite in daylight if exposed to the sky and it also can be turned off if uh, you give it a light level of 10 or above. So this is made with a rotten egg, which it creates a 5x5 area of dreadful dirt. So I don't know if it spreads in darkness. So we're going to try a 5x5 of the thing and we're going to place some dirt around it possibly and cover it up and see if it spreads and if it does good we can make a bigger mob farm if it doesn't we'll make a 5x5 mob farm but we can get the rotten egg here from the shop for 30 c bucks which we do have we have a stack and 42 so that's pretty cool and that is the plan for the beginning of next episode and also organizing all of this and possibly in between episodes i will set up all of these uh, back again somewhere and we can reassemble the smeltery in a bigger variety. We have a few more seared bricks here. Plus we can put in more cobblestone into the smeltery to get more seared bricks as well. So with all that being said, I want to thank you all so much for watching. I am really hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. And you can also subscribe to get notified when new videos go live. And you can also support me on Patreon as well if you want. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.